Hello and welcome back to the Nature Photography Show. In this video, we're going to talk about Lightroom Classic and the catalog. So let me ask you a question. When you go into Lightroom Classic, is the catalog just a mess? Do you hate looking at it? Do you hate the thought of looking for an image? Well, I, I've been there. I've done the keywording. I've done. I've sorted it by year, by day, by time, by any any way that you can sort it, except for the easy ways. I've managed to do that in the past, and there were times where it was very difficult for me to find an image that I was looking for. The keywording is a great way to do it if you're diligent about it. But if you're like me and you forget the keyword, and then you look and you've got 35,000 images that don't have keywords on them. Well, that can be a little bit daunting. So I've got a different way that I do it. And, and the way that I've decided to do my Lightroom catalog is just to make it as simple as possible. Now, before we head on over into Lightroom, there's a part of this that you really need to understand. If the way that you do Lightroom works for you, then you don't need to go any further than this. If it works for you, then great. If, if it doesn't work for you and you're looking for a way to do it, then you can try this. If, Ultimately, that doesn't work either. That's okay, too. So the way that I do it isn't necessarily the right way. It's just the right way for me. It may not be the right way for you, and that's perfectly okay. So let's head on over into Lightroom, and let's check it out. All right, so here we are in Lightroom, and I just want to take a second to reiterate the fact that if you have a library system, a catalog system that works for you in Lightroom, then that's fantastic. You don't need to go any further in this. You can just keep doing things the way that you're doing because the way I do it makes sense to me. That doesn't mean it's gonna make sense to you. But if there's something out of this that you can use and it makes it a little better for you, then that's great. If not, then you can just move along to a different video. But for this, the way that I have it is it's set up as simple as I could make it because I've tried to make it complex in the past and it ends up just making a mess or it drives me crazy or I can't find exactly what I'm looking for because of some mistake that I made in the keyword. Whatever it is, I had to make it simple. And I found that if I just make things in life simple, then my life is generally better. So I did that with my photos. So now this next part might sound a little bit confusing, but just hang on for a second. I feel like I should tell you. So this is my master catalog. It's all of my images from last year and older. And this year I have a catalog on my main hard drive on my computer for 2023, and it'll be set up the same way. And the reason I do that is because when I'm going through and I'm finishing the photos, I want it on the fastest hard drive that I have in the fastest computer that I have so that while I'm working with it, it doesn't slow down. Then at the end of the year, I export it and then I import it into this master catalog where it stays forever. Now, the way I've broken it down to be extremely simple is by the kinds of photography that I do and the locations. And it really is that simple. So you can see over here on the left, under my folders, I've, I've got architecture and astronomy and cities and family and friends, landscapes. Landscapes are what I do most often, but there's people and sports and transportation. I love photographing airplanes, travel, some wildlife. And that's almost as simple as it gets. There's one more little bit of complexity, and that is just the location. So you might be wondering, that, that doesn't seem very detailed, and it's not. Because the way I had it at one point in the past was I had it by year, by month, by day. So if I said, hey, I wonder uh, those shots of the Grand Teton, how about those? And then I would go to the Grand Tetons and I would try... I, I would go to the year that I thought it was, and then I would miss the year, and then I, I would miss the the month that I shot it in and I'm, I'm having to go through and go through and go through and, and I'm trying to chase it down. So I decided to make it super easy. So I have landscapes and then I have the Grand Teton National Park and this is all the images that I shot on that trip. This particular image is actually of a different place in Wyoming but it was on the trip to the Grand Tetons traveling across country, that kind of stuff, or traveling through Wyoming. But all of my shots are, are of the Grand Teton are here, all of them. 
from every time that I've ever been. The same thing with the Great Smoky Mountains, same thing with Jupiter Beach or the Everglades. These are images that I've shot years and years and years. So you might ask, well, what do you do if you want to try to find something that you shot in March of a certain year or May of a certain year? Because I know I've got those in Grand Tetons. Well, you can bring up the filter box here and you have to hit the backslash key or the letter G key will bring up the, the grid. And under metadata, you have all kinds of choices. So I've got the years and the months that I was there. So that way I can just click those and it will just show only the images that I'm filtering here. So I, I do still have it by year and by day and by month if I want. But I don't have to go through and set that up over here on the left and try to find it later if I happen to want to look at it that way. Most of the time, I don't care about the year that it was shot or anything of that sort. So I just care about what it is exactly that I'm looking for. So now when I look at these images, another simple thing that I do is I, I star rate it, but I only use zero or five. I know there's a one, two, three, and four in there. And some people really like to get into the details of their images and oh, this one's a two and that's so I kind of like it, but I don't really like it. So we're going to make this maybe a three. So it's all subjective anyway. So for me, I just, I use the flag system, which is a letter P for pick. So if I see one that I want to work on, then I hit the letter P and it picks it. And then if I manipulate one, work with it, finish it, and I really like it, I'll put a five on it. So if I want to look at the Grand Tetons, at the best images that I like, or at least the images that I like, it's really simple. I would go to the Grand Teton, and then I would bring up the filter. I would go to Attribute, hit the flag, hit the five star, and there we go. So now I'm not having to look through years and years and years of Grand Teton for my best images. I am simply looking in the Grand Tetons at the ones that I've picked with a five-star rating. And it really is that simple. So just to show you Everglades, all right, so here's the Everglades National Park. This was taken forever and a day ago, 2008. My wife was still pregnant then. It's amazing how long ago that was. But now I've got all these images in here. I don't want to see them all. I just want to see the ones that I liked at the time. And look at that. It's all set up. So now these are the images that I worked on, that I liked, that I did something with, and it really is that simple. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video, and make sure you take the time to like and subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Let me know how it is that you sort your catalog in Lightroom. Let me know how wrong I am about the way that I sort it. That will be an excellent discussion. So thanks again for watching, and as always, Grab your camera, get off the couch, escape, explore, and create.